the image I get in my head when I see this is the boats coming to shore uh, early in the morning, especially at dawn. You see the boats come in, and especially if the water's calm and it's so quiet. And the refugees, they don't know what to expect, and it just takes one volunteer to wave. And then you hear the cheer go up, you know, unbelievable. <laughs> Easy, bring the boat in. They're doing selfies already. These are Syrians. Oh, boy. <laughs> come on, little one. <laughs> come on, take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> the two little ones trying. Okay. We came uh, on a cheap holiday. Um, 26 years ago uh, and fell in love with the place and we got married and then when our daughter was born we decided we would come and try and make a life to bring our daughter up here. I think in the you know these days it's really difficult to, to have time to be a family so like in the UK you're both working your kids are with strangers from when they're tiny and we wanted to actually be parents. We wanted to spend time with our daughter while she was growing up because those years are so fast and so precious. That, and, and this seemed the ideal place. And then things changed a little bit in 2015. Well, the world arrived on our doorstep after years of an insulated life. This started for us, you know, we're taking our, our daughter to school at sort of 6.30 in the morning because she had a, a big commute to school. And we're driving to the end of that road and there's women and kids on the beach. And suddenly we've got Syrians and Iraqis, Afghans, all fleeing war, all with their own story, all different religions. Um, and you cannot, as a human, drive past people in need like that. You just can't do it. So we stopped and we started to help. And we haven't got much. So we were giving them our clothes, my daughter's clothes, whatever food that we could get together. Um, and it started from what was a few boats a week to a few boats a day to 10 boats a day. And in October, at the maximum we had was 200 and we, we actually watched people drown with no way of helping because there's no rescue boats here. There's one Coast Guard boat in Molivos with one crew that was then by sort of May was working 12 hours shifts just picking up people and they couldn't cope and nobody came. I'm an artist, so I carve wood and I paint and things like that. Philippa runs the business. And then, you know, in 2014, at the end of 2014, we see the babies coming on the boats. Before, it was mainly men. People coming with bullet wounds and shrapnel and things like this. They're coming out of Syria. It was horrific. It was a war zone. Oh, take it easy, take it easy. Take it easy. You can't describe the emotion of, of what goes on on the beach, the smells and the fear, vomit of unconscious women being dragged off boats because they'd hyperventilated through sheer panic. And then the dragging people out of the water, the, the dead, the kids. I think they all thought they were going to die out there. But, uh... And when they bring in people from like Syria with lumps of metal hanging out of them and it's gone black and they've been weeks and weeks trying to get yes. someone, a doctor because they don't get looked after in Turkey and they come here and the smell is incredible. Uh, we've had people in the car with gangrene. I've, we brought one 14 year old boy off of a boat. He had bullet wounds and shrapnel in, in him and his whole body was black and the nurse said he's not gonna make it to Mytilene. Just a month ago we lost at least 16 people, probably more. There was 25 people on the boat, two survived. One pregnant woman and uh, another lady survived after what we can only work out about 10 hours in the water, and the water's still pretty cold. 
we just done our best as human beings to help other human beings. And, they, you know, they came and they came and they came and it got worse and worse and worse. Yeah. One day we brought in 12,000 people. One day. One day, yeah. And there was nothing here. There was no governments. There was nothing helping us. But we thought at the time, you know, we're jumping and help what we can until all the help comes from governments in Europe and the European Parliament. And we got a load of abuse from people here, but we just carried on helping. You know, when you see babies suffering and you see people suffering the way we were seeing them suffering, so we just jumped in and helped and we just done the best we could. I mean, now we have a lot more support with rescue boats and things. In 2015, there was nobody here. You know, we had to stand by and watch people die. Yeah, and the world just ignores the whole thing. So we're just pulling up because we've had some other volunteers intimidated out. by one of the locals. This has been made from somebody who should not be closed. So it's not your out. Land. Out. So Excuse why does me. the police want to know who's one threatening people? people? One moment. Go and get the police. We're, we're Our local town, they don't accept refugees. They've actually put it on social media. They don't want refugees and they won't accept refugees. I've had the, lo the mayor attack us on social media as a family. On top of that, you have the really vicious fascists coming at us. They're going to slip my throat. They're hanging us from trees. They're going to rape my daughter. This is a constant thing over the last few years. People seem to be under the sort of misconception that if you don't help, they wouldn't have come. And we've actually been told by the local town that if you'd let more of them drown at the beginning, then it would have stopped them coming. Mm. But they, they, they actually hold us personally responsible for the entire 2015 refugee crisis. You want refugees here? You, you, you want don't... refugees? No, I don't want refugees. Oh. I don't want the bodies on the beaches either. So that's why we help oh, to stop the bodies no, on the beaches. Oh, me. Yeah. Sorry, Listen, me. listen, listen. Go have a story. England and and stay and in England and then in your okay. land. You don't you, like you to have, have boats you, out of my land. You have, out. This is your land. Out right. of my land. It, it's bizarre that rescuing people can be taken as encouraging them and they were coming anyway they, they you know all we did was try and save lives and try and make these people's lives a little bit more tolerable 99 percent of the people on the island have been absolutely fantastic one village just 12 kilometers the other way has been nominated for two nobel peace prizes it's just this very few which you'll get anywhere in the world the rich people controlling a town and this is where the hate comes from you have to learn their language and tell them not to leave their things inside. Who's going to pick all these fucking things up? It's nice what you do, but who's going to do this? The bombs are faulting them. It's not just coming in here, they're coming in even at the airport. All down by the airport, even more people coming in and no Why one helps send them in to Mitte, direct to Mitilini? This is not my problem. My problem is the children and the babies. And people say, why are they running? What would it take for us to, to run? The neighbour's kids get shot, you know, there's a car bomb down the road. At what point did you decide you can't continue? And a lot of these people sat out the, the, the sort of first four years of the war. And people don't realise the quality of life they have. They think all, all Muslims are sort of tent living kind of dwellers of the desert. These are uh, exceptionally educated, middle class, college uh graduates engineers uh doctors pharmacists surgeons we had a brain surgeon come through on a boat everybody is suddenly in the same boat literally a lady one day uh, rings a bell and she said i need a hotel and i need a shower and i said sorry lady you're not allowed a hotel a shower you know you, you have to live on the floor tonight maybe never done it in her life and she said i'll buy the hotel i said you can't do that either So oh, this is the life jacket mountain, um, or the life jacket graveyard, people call it. This is the only thing that gets to me. It's, uh, most of these people we brought up. Out of everything that I've seen and done out here, this when I first came here, this is the one that got to me, uh, because most of these people we brought in. And when I stand even now and look at this, you know, it, it gets to me.